Hey everyone, Isabel Fox here and in today's lesson we're talking about how you can discover exactly how long you should stay in the sex industry for and I guarantee you the answer may shock you. Now I want to start by explaining why I almost didn't write about this topic. I feel that this topic, as important as it is, is a very contentious issue and I almost shied away from it because I thought how can I cover such a comprehensive topic in just a short lesson? And how can I possibly address all the different varying factors that one may face when they're trying to make this decision? But then I realized that this is actually one of the most important things to think about when you get into the sex industry. Even though we spend most of our time talking about money, how to make money, how to stay safe, how to protect our identity, which are all really important things. I found from experience that this question seems to linger in the back of our minds like a bad dream, something that we try to avoid thinking about because we're scared of the truths that we have to face, but ultimately we will all be faced, all be forced to face this one day and forced to make hard decisions. And when that time comes, we generally don't know how to decide, so we fall victim to life circumstances and we are reactive instead of proactive which means that life happens to you instead of actually making conscious decisions for what you want. So in light of that, and given the fact that I have been asked this question so many times and by many girls that I work with and that I try to help, and it's actually a question that I have faced many times over the years, I decided that I had to talk about it and I had to give some practical step-by-step -step solutions as to how you can figure this out. And the shocking answer is that there is no one set, one size fits all answer. It is very dependent on each person, but you can use a very specific formula to find this out for yourself. So I'm going to start by sharing with you the things I wish someone had told me when I was starting out. And it's important because it's going to give some background knowledge to the method that I'm going to share with you today. So as eight points. One, you will not want to do this forever but it will be harder to leave than you could have ever possibly imagined. And that's really why I made this formula. There will come multiple times throughout your career if you stay in the sex industry for an elongated period of time, where you are forced to take a good hard look at whether or not you want to keep working. And when you it comes time to do this, it will be so hard to make that decision, whether it be because of a relationship, which is a big one, whether it be because of health problems, it might be because you genuinely are just sick of the job and don't want to do it anymore. You might have another opportunity come up in life and decide that you want to pursue that. But it will be really difficult even if you decide, yes, this is the time for me to leave, to actually leave. Harder than you ever could have possibly thought. Even me telling you this now, it will not sink in until you actually have that experience. Two, a lot of money isn't really a lot of money you will need more than you think. And I really do stress need. When you get into this, you might think that you want to save 10 grand. Maybe you want to save 20 grand. Maybe you want to save for a deposit of that on a house. You will probably need at least double what you think because you will have periods of time off work that you can't plan for. Things that you think cost X will actually cost Y and it will be a bigger number than you anticipated. You won't account for at first the fact that when you stop working, you will now be used to a much higher level of income which is no longer there. So your income for most people will not accumulate. The figure that you end with is what you have and it will run out really quickly. Three, save from day one. No excuses or exceptions, just save. There isn't much to elaborate on here. I've covered how you do that in a previous lesson. If you haven't heard it, you should jump into it and listen to how to stack your savings. If you do this from day one, you will thank your, yourself. Your future self will thank you. Number four, relationships will be harder for you and for them. This is a big reason for why a lot of people stop working, is having a relationship while working in the sex industry is in by no means impossible, but it is harder. And it doesn't matter what anybody says about why it shouldn't be harder, it is, and it is every single time. I've had a number of them, and it always pr um, presents its own unique challenges. There will be a day where you'll probably be sick of that and so will your partner and you will want to stop. Five, the sooner you learn to focus on sustainable repeat clientele, the more money you will make. Pace yourself, don't kill yourself. Slow and steady really, really does win the race and it really does benefit your bank account. 
You will want to kill yourself at first and make a ton of money in a short period of time. Then you will burn out and you'll blow it all and you'll have to start all over again. So the sooner you get yourself out of this cycle, the better. Six, surround yourself with like-minded people and you will be happier. It is difficult to be alone in this industry for a long period of time. The sooner you meet people who can support what you do, the more successful you will be. Seven, decide early on what you're here to achieve and be prepared to have that change over time. We're going to talk about this in depth today. Eight, value yourself and value the special contribution you are making to the world and the opinions of others will affect you far less. I've put this at the bottom because it is the most impactful point that I could make, but it is also the hardest one to master. If you really care and know why you are here to do what you're doing, the fluctuating opinions of others who come in and out of your life won't matter as much and you won't be as easily pushed off your path, which you'll have, you'll face that in your journey, is there'll be people who come into your life who try to persuade you to stop what you're doing and they're often very, very well intentioned. If you aren't sure of why you're here, those people will sway you and you don't want that. You want to come here and achieve what you want to achieve. So now let's talk about my method. One, start with the end in mind. For most of us, sex work is not a lifetime occupation. Know early on that this income will eventually end and plan for it. So make that a reality in your mind from day one as much as possible. There will be a day that you stop. If you can think about this long term, it will help you to become more of a planner, which will give you more power over when it's time to leave. Decide what your end goal is. What do you want to transition into when you finish this? What do you want for your life? It's not an easy question, but the sooner you figure it out, the easier your decision to leave will be. You will not know the answer straight away, but the sooner you start trying to figure it out, the more direction you will have. Once you have figured it out, commit to it and make a plan. This is the timeline for your time in the sex industry. So a lot of people may talk about a certain age when you should stop working. Maybe it's to do in your mind with a relationship. Maybe it's to do in your mind with kids. It doesn't really matter. What matters is the timeline that you've set for yourself. There's no special magic number that you just hit and wake up one day and say it's time to leave. The only number that matters is the timeline that you set for yourself. Two, know your values. So how do you actually figure out what you want that end goal to be? A lot of people talk about create the life that you dream of, but most people don't actually know what life that they dream of. So I'm going to give you some tools here today to try and figure it out. Firstly, seek to understand your own values and create goals and plans that align with what you value most. There really is no use trying to convince yourself to value something that you don't value. So be honest with yourself and you will find that you are naturally inspired from within to go out and achieve that. So if what you really value is having a family and being a mother, don't try to convince yourself that you value a career and a business. There's nothing wrong with valuing whatever it is that you want to have. But if you make goals that actually align with that and you don't try and trick yourself into being something that you're not, you will genuinely be inspired from within to go out every day and achieve that. And it will be far easier for you to stay on track. So if you truly believe in that end goal of being a mother with all her beautiful kids and what you want is to come into this industry and make a set figure that you know will help you to support that family, it will be very difficult for you to be knocked off track by something that happens to you in your life. You'll be more committed to staying because you'll see that goal and you'll say, no, I know what I'm here to do. I value that more than anything else and I'm going to achieve it. If you set a goal to have this big business or career when that isn't really what you want, then the second the thing that comes along that you do want, if you perceive that as being outside the industry, you will leave very quickly to pursue that and you won't achieve what you came to do. Now know that for most, our voids dictate our values. So that's generally a good place to start. So my experience in life is that the girls who grow up with no money, with no money generally have very strong driving money goals. So they're good things to focus on. If you've grown up not being desired by men and what you really want is to live a life where you feel like you're really desirable, then that is something that you should be focusing on and setting goals around. If you grew up with not a very strong family life and you've been alone a lot, then you will probably want to set goals around having a family. Now, I'm not saying that this applies to everybody. I'm just saying that this applies to most. 
and I've actually included a link here for you, which is drdmartini.com forward slash values hyphen determination hyphen um, forward slash sorry. And I've used this with everyone that I've worked with and I do it for myself regularly. It's one thing to think you know your values and another thing to know that you know them and your actions will show you what you really want in life. So I really recommend that you jump on here. It's a free test that you can continue to go back to as well to see how your values change. And this will give you a lot of insight into yourself and it will help you for where to start to set those goals. Three, plan to continuously reassess your goals. And this is exceptionally important. You need to expect for your original time frame to change. That's okay, but be conscious of it and change your plans when it does. So when you start at the age of 18, maybe what you really want is to own your own home. And you set the figure and you know, I need to work to earn this amount and then I'm going to stop and I'm going to buy that house and that's my plan. But if you start at the age of 18 and you're still working at the age of 23 to hit that goal, you, might fi you may find at 23 that that is no longer as important to you as it first was at the age of 18. In fact, I almost guarantee that from the age of 18 to 23, what you care about will change. So don't try to resist that. Don't worry about it. Just recognize it when it happens and then come back to your plan and reassess. Know that the lack of a plan will result in you falling victim to life circumstances. Don't be reactive, be proactive. So I talked about this earlier. When you don't have a plan, life gives you the plan and you don't have a ch have any choice over that and it will most likely not be the plan that you want. So if you're not clear on why you're here, something or someone will come along and push you off your path and you'll end up probably fulfilling somebody else's plan rather than being the master of your own. So don't allow that to be you. Actually make a plan and be proactive about it and then if something does come along, you can revert back to your plan and you can reassess. So it is your plan that will tell you when it's time to leave. It will also tell you when it's time to stay. I'll give you an example of something that happened to me. I had a plan. I wanted to make a certain amount of money because I've always been really passionate about creating a big happy family to love and about being a really strong, independent financial supporter in that family for my kids. And I met a man and I almost thought that I should stop working to make a relationship work with him. And it isn't that I didn't love him and that I didn't want the relationship to work, but I knew that at that time, if I stopped, I wouldn't achieve the goal that I wanted to. I wouldn't be a strong, financially independent person in a relationship providing for children. And I'm just sharing that with you because that's what's important to me. I'm not saying that's right or wrong or that that works for somebody else, but that is what mattered to me. And I had a choice. I could have stopped and perhaps made him happy for a period of time, but I ultimately wouldn't have been happy long term because what I wanted more than just being with him was to be that person who provided for her family. So I consulted my plan and I didn't do the thing that I was tempted to do in the moment. I stuck to my guns and I was really, really thankful for it after the fact when all the emotion had calmed down. So that's just a personal experience of mine. Everybody will react differently in certain situations and that's not right or wrong but I'm giving you an example for when I was tempted to leave but it wasn't my time and I knew that because of the plans that I had set for myself. Now if you reach a fork in the road i.e. getting into a relationship at least you'll still be sure of what you want to achieve and you will find it easier to look for other methods other than sex work to get where you're wanting to go. So this doesn't just apply to staying in the sex industry. I'm really trying to give you some methods here and some tools to help you figure out what you want out of your life. So you may meet a man, for instance, for myself, and want that big happy family where you are a financial provider. And you might decide that I want to step out of sex industry, out of the sex industry. Now the plan, the goal doesn't have to change, just a tool to achieve that goal. So I could have said, you know what, I'm stepping out of the sex industry, but I'm going to continue on my plan and I'm going to find another way to get what I want while also still being in this relationship. Now I definitely could have done that. And so can you, no matter what obstacle comes in your way. I've also had times where I've had to stop working because I had serious health problems that were being exacerbated by work. And the same thing happened. I had my plan. And so I went to something else to try and fulfill that plan. And happily, I was able to return to sex work and continue on my original path after some time off. So that was great. But if I hadn't have, 
hadn't have, I would have had direction and I could have used that plan to help me find something new to replace the sex work. So this is my method and this is obviously just a starting point. I don't claim that this will solve all of your problems, but what I can tell you is that this is probably a far more practical and helpful tool than anything else you would have seen before. The whole listen to your heart or listen to your gut phrase isn't really that helpful most of the time when you actually get into real world dilemmas and situations. What you need is to have something to actually consult that can practically help you at all. So that's all for this really contentious, complex topic. I have tried to address it as best as I can in a short period of time. Again, it is only the starting point. There's a whole lot more to this that applies to every individual situation. But I truly hope that if you are at a fork in the road now that this gives you some clarity or that if you get to one in the future, it gives you some clarity or that if you are kind of in the sex industry, just plodding along and not really sure of what, why you're here, not really sure of your direction, that this helps fire you up, that this helps give you some purpose in life and helps you find what it is you're here to do and helps you find some future happiness. So I really hope that you give these things a go. I would love to hear your feedback. I always welcome any sort of contact. So hit me up on isabel at foxgirls.com.au. I would love to hear from you and I can't wait to speak with you soon.